In Jesus' day, leprosy was a very deadly disease and there was no way to treat it. So the only way to, to not contaminate the whole town was to make the leper leave the town. But the problem with that was is that they were cut off from all society. A few people would go out and leave them food, but no one was allowed to go anywhere near them. Now there was a reason for that because leprosy spread very quickly. However, one of the things about leprosy in that day was that many skin diseases were considered leprosy even though they weren't contagious. For example, psoriasis was considered leprosy. Some of the other things that you know, we take for granted today were considered leprosy. Of course, today, leprosy, Hansen's disease, is treatable, but a person must remain in isolation. And when a person is, isola is in isolation, it can be very, very traumatic for that person. We experience these days people who are in isolation and families can't visit them. We as priests can't visit them. No one can visit them except the men and women who take care of them. It is the doctors, the nurses, the people who bring their food and their, the people who clean their rooms who are around them. But at least they're taken care of. They're tended to. And if you read the, the, the news and listen to the news, you see how many nurses and doctors are so compassionate and loving that they'll do anything to help a person who is in isolation. And when that person gets better, they're welcome back to the community. You know, we still must be aware that there are contagious diseases and we're very aware of it in our lives now. But you know, part of it too is, is that at least in our society, many diseases are treatable, but, and they are, people are taken care of. We are fortunate, I think, to, to live in the United States because we do have good hospitals. So that we should be thankful for that. But there's another side to this story. Who are the lepers today? Maybe not people who have a Hansen's disease, but there are people who are being left out. They are being shunned, thrown out of the community because of who they are. And sometimes we can see that when we talk about them. How many times have we heard a person say, they are doing this, they are responsible for that, they are, are not good people, they are not one of us. Those are the lepers. When we treat our brothers and sisters with disdain and we put them down, what do we think about a person of another faith, of another color, of another physician in life? Are they lepers? Sometimes some people do treat them like that. And they are the modern day lepers and they cannot. What about the person whose orientation is different than ours? They're shunned sometimes by family and friends. What does that say about the leper? And what does Jesus do? He touches the leper. That was totally forbidden in those days because that basically left Jesus unclean too. But he knew that that man, that particular leper, was being left out of the community because of the disease he had. And by rights, he should have been isolated because he had a disease. But he was totally shunned. And that is what Jesus said is wrong. No matter who a person is, we are all God's children, created in God's image and likeness, and each and every person is to be treated with respect. Therefore, no one should be a leper in our community. No one should be left out. We should not talk about them and what they do. We should try to build up God's kingdom on earth so that everybody can share in the joy of the kingdom of heaven. So let us pray for the people who, who, are, who, are, who need a change of heart, that they will see that we are all God's children and they are worthy of God's love. And each and every one of us should be included in the community.
no matter who we are, what our faith, what our color, what our orientation, what, what we are. Remember, we are all God's children. 